Borrowed Trauma is an early access game found on Steam, created in June 2019 by Finnish developers Undertow Games and published by Daedalic Entertainment. It is a hardcore, teamwork based objective game with survival elements and optional traitor mechanics. The game takes place in various different game modes of your choosing, on a 2D screen with a simple inventory as well as a notebook you can pull up, which has all your objective and skill trees on. There are over exaggerated character physics which make for some strange but hilarious looking moments, adding to the comedy and fun in high octane and panicky situations, especially with friends. You take on the role of one of many, or few, crew members on a submarine on one of Jupiter's moons. The roles range from security, to electrician, to mechanical repairman, captain or doctor. Each of these classes have their own responsibilities and can spec into three different talent trees which will optimise their abilities in certain ways. Ranging from specking an engineer to a crafting base character, unlocking further useful crafting products such as hardened tools, radioactive weapons, as well as passive abilities to assist your team or your role. For example, in a different engineer tree, you get the ability to gain more mission experience and bonus skills but less maximum HP. Each class has three trees they can choose, with many possibilities for different runs. For responding to character roles on a submarine, there are usually different posts each job will be assigned to or present on. The pilot will have the helm which will give the ability to pilot and monitor the submarine, meaning he can give various pointers and pings to different sections of the ship, direct crew mem members to repair, deal with fires, kill invasive creatures or humans. There is a medical station on board and a security armory which are self-explanatory. There are many different types of submarines within this game, ranging from those playable with only two characters to upwards of ten crew members. There is also an in-game custom submarine creator, which is extremely complicated if you can get into it. The submarines in this game are partially realistic. There exists a wiring system which you can attach various different modules to, change their behaviour. With such complicated systems such as calculating the sin, cause or tan of a result, and then there using this value to do things with. I'm not sufficient in dealing with advanced mathematics or dealing with this wiring system, so I tend not to touch it too much. I want to highlight it because it is really interesting, and if you can deal with it, then you can do a lot of cool things with it. For example, you can force wire door shuts when invaders get in, or rig airlocks to change how they function so they instead open both doors. The general idea of this game, and general gameplay loop, not considerate of your game mode, is to perform a task given to you or picked up by the player character. Campaign mode is my favourite, whilst it is still a work in progress, it's my most liked due to the progression it holds. In campaign mode, you travel between different stations which sell resources, crewmates, submarine upgrades and submarines. Your main objective in campaign mode is to get a high enough reputation to pass through the next and more difficult areas by performing favours for the local authorities. This can range from many things such as mining operations, killing huge sea monsters, dealing with creature swarms, attacking other submarines, investigating alien ruins and much more. As you move through a generated level on your sonar you are given the rough location of this threat or objective. On the way you can pick up materials from crashed submarines, destroyed outposts and ore you may find. This is where wiring becomes important as you can potentially restore bases, submarines and recon beacons throughout the world for additional cash. Other game modes include simple single missions without the campaign aspect, but also an Among Us, Among Us style game where a traitor is tasked with sabotaging the submarine, leading to some tense moments as you cannot trust your team completely. The game can be split into two main gameplay sections. One is the operation and movement in the main submarine which involves maintaining, repairing, defending and managing the inventory of the craft. Invasive creatures, species and sea creatures, the poisonous moss and flora will attack your ship. This is the most common part of the game, and whilst any character can perform any of the tasks present on the submarine, different classes, different talents and different proficiencies will excel. Doing a task will impro improve your proficiency at that particular task and skill at it. This includes failing maintenance less, or doing repair check, which uses an RNG system, so the more skillful you are, or the more talents you have in that particular skill, will improve your ability to do that without failing. The other area of the game is the deep sea exploration outside of your ship, using sea glides, deep sea diving suits, and going into wreckages, alien ruins and caves to explore and fulfil your objectives. This can lead to dark treks which will make, may get you trapped, ambushed or drowned. The immersion in this game is unbelievable. Even if it's comedic with its over exaggerated physics and the presence of friends, there can be an absolute adrenaline rush as people rush to fill up holes or section off the ship to retain the spread of a swarm which is broken in. We're currently moving. Oh, they're inside I need, yeah. my, it's open, I need my suit. It's Go, go. Bring me my broadsword. We're going down fast. We are descending extremely quickly. Ah, <laughs> Got collided with the cable. Collided with the cable. Ah, kill it. Get kill your suits. Get your suits. Oh, suit okay, but um, balance tank is repaired. Wait, can, can you? Can you, can you fuck, are you going us? I'm going back up. Oh shit! <laughs> oh no, they're getting in. <laughs> oh shit! I'm sorry, Sounds the like pilot someone's quarters, breaking in. Pilot quads are breaking in. I can't get out the door. I'm stuck in the door. <laughs> oh, my horn's stuck in the door! <laughs> Move! Oh no, they're coming towards me! Oh, 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 oh. Will! Look at my horn! Your security guy, kill him! Oh my god, they're on the road! I'm literally. You're failing your, your job! Look how many there are!
The dark areas and constant sounds and echoes throughout the ocean is fantastic, and this, alongside the possibility that you could lose your submarine if anything goes too wrong, makes for a brilliant co-op experience. The level of panic is unrivaled when you are faced with a threat, which is my favourite part. The game is built for replayability, with different roles and talents to pick, to different submarines and submarine upgrades if you are playing campaign. The game is cheap, but is also perfect for 4 players, optimally at least. I'm not a fan of the PvP aspect because it lacks the longevity and progression which makes Battle Trauma fun I think. This game truly shines when you play the game for the first few times, experiencing the deep ocean and the unknown missions and the unknown enemies, but also finding out all the different crafting recipes, the personalization of submarines which work for you. The addition of rewiring, upgrades, attaching weapon systems and craftable items make the game extremely fun. The crafting system deserves a further mention as it serves as a facet alongside all your other things for different classes to shine and contribute to the team effort. Each talent tree offers a unique item set to craft alongside their buffs. For example, the Doctor class can create gene splices which give semi-permanent abilities. Another route the Doctor can take is to create combat stimulants which increase stats or boosters to improve revival skills. The collective effort that makes up the gameplay of this game is amazing and well designed by the developers. It gives players a degree of individualism as each player can bring a degree of specialization to the table which will benefit the crew in different regards. The crafting system allows us to have in material form, creating stronger items for the team. As I've mentioned a few times, each talent tree comes with a set of buffs or crafting recipes to use. These buffs are very important and allows the team to gain more XP, deal more damage, live longer and much much more. To showcase this, this is the assistant skill tree, a miscellaneous class who are very much designed to go any route. If you don't have a route in mind initially, you can choose assistant. Their skill trees are very very general, save for the third one. Their Jack of All Trades skill tree allows allied characters and themselves to gain additional repair speed, more skill points in the first tier. On the second tier, if they read the Sailor's Guide in a mission, then all nearby allies gain full progress to all skills. Their final perk in this tree gives them the ability to surpass normal perk limits and gain skill points more than usual. A particularly amusing one is the Clown skill tree for the assistant, which is both a meme and very strong. It gives a range of defensive buffs to their team whenever the clown in question honks their horn. The final tier of this talent tree gives the ability to slowly heal nearby allies with the horn and allows the clown assistant to have a 0.75% chance of blowing up anything they hit with a toy hammer, as well as giving 25% base damage resistance. Experiencing the free talent trees for each of the 6 classes within this game is very very entertaining. Finally, the sea stations deserve a small part of mention. Sea stations in the campaign mode are another avenue to customising and making runs unique. This is as mentioned is due to the merchants on board, the random events you can partake in and the upgrade stations. In this clip, our team of 4, me as the captain, a doctor, security officer and an electrical engineer are given a task to destroy a local pirate submarine which had been sighted and had been attacking submarines on site. After a bit of interaction with the locals, we swiftly headed in the direction of these pirate sightings, packing more nuclear power than the average developed nation. As we approached, the sonar picked up a shape and trail of projectiles approaching the top right of our ship. After receiving some upper deck damage, I identified that we were being hit by a coral gun from an opposing submarine. As we repaired the ship, our local clown and part-time doctor loaded the illicitly crafted nuclear railgun rounds as we prepared to send them to their ancestors. A short moment passed as I positioned our ship below theirs and then boom, a flash. We had successfully nuked the pirate threat. Our plan was to position ourselves underneath the pirate submarine to catch the wreckage. As the last pirate mission we did, it plummeted into the dark abyss and we were unable to salvage it. This time we caught the decaying mess of body parts and metal and successfully touched down below. After a short delay, me and the security officers, followed by the clown, Disembark to confirm any survivors and check the damage and do some looting. Three of the five crew members on board had managed to get a suit on and weren't near the impact so they lived. We had a brief exchange of gunfire before our super shotgun unit moved in to finish the job. We had done it, the loot was ours. One problem though, we were stuck underneath their submarine. In response to this, after mulling over various ideas such as nuking it again, we decided to not meet our pirate friends in hell shortly afterwards and decided to instead repair their submarine and pilot it away from ours. After that we'd set their reactor to explode because we no longer needed it and we'd like fireworks. After a hasty trek around the ship of repairing the many damaged hull elements, supercapacitors, transformer boxes, oxygen generators, engines, turbines and reactors, we had a fully functioning pirate submarine. This is one of the many missions available on Bower Trauma and the freedom of how you approach them on the order weaponry you use or how you choose to board or hijack their ship is entirely up to you. The campaign mode gives an element of resource management and economy as we stole all the high power coal gun ammunition to sell at the next post. 
Overall, Barrow Trauma is one of those games which deserve more praise and more attention due to the passion of developers to constantly update the game and add even more content to the existing runs. The addition of gene splicing and the talent tree system, as well as, well as an overall customization update, was an especially welcome one as it gave more reason to delve into the crafting system and periphery parts of the game which could be missed out on the first playthrough. The individualism provided by these mechanics strengthened the collective effort which is piloting the submarine, further being bolstered or hindered by the teamwork present or not present on the ship. The game is a fantastic, clearly passionate project with lots of depth and possibilities for the future. However, sometimes the game is dragged down by the initial parts in the campaign mode. The maintenance especially, before your engineer or other crewmates build a skill to it, will have issues keeping the ship going without wounding themselves and failing the RNG checks. This can lead to an experience which is quite annoying as you have to constantly throw yourself at low RNG checks to keep the ship maintained. This becomes a lesser issue throughout the game as you develop your skills, however it's more of an early game annoyance. Another problem is the game's AI. While fundamentally they are quite good, you have to strongly micromanage them to make them effective, as they perform their tasks way too well. For example, if you command an AI to maintain an electrical system on a ship, they will run around and repair it every time it drops below 100% durability, meaning they often come back very injured because they are constantly trying to repair every electrical system on the ship, even though it just ticked down one point. If there was a less binary command for repairing, such as choosing to only repair below 50% or something, this would definitely fix the issue and make it less annoying to constantly heal your teammates and have them constantly take damage. Despite this, the game is in its current state is very much worth the purchase, and if the developers continue to add more interesting features and bug fixes, then the game only benefits massively from it. The game is constantly on sale, and I've picked it up for £10 in the past and my friends at other times. If you have a 3-4 to four man in your group, you will enjoy this experience the most. I haven't tried with any more people than this, so it's hard to say how interesting an 8-man will be. The game's in-game radio is another thing I'd like to mention before closing, as the proximity chat and the radio filter adds for another layer of panic and, and realism as you try to navigate your way through this, this radio. Hearing a teammate's radio cut off as they float into the ocean or as you move away from them is very nerve wracking. Thanks for watching and Barrel Trauma deserves a lot of love as it is one of the games that devs have done the exact same with.